Good morning. Today, I, Grantly Sherwood, have the joy of sharing God's word with you. Reading from Luke 12, verse 22. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. And Jesus ends off the passage in verse 31. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. This is such a good summary of the passage that we all know it, and often quote it. However, it seems Jesus seems to be thinking to himself, My disciples just don't get it. Maybe I will need to explain it all again. So he says in verse 32, Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I want to unpack these three short verses as they have a wealth of information in them. Do not be afraid, little flock. Well, little flock of what? Sheep, of course. What is the number one characteristic of a sheep? As a boy, we had sheep on our farm, and they were always getting themselves stuck in the most ridiculous situations. They seemed to specialize in being stupid. Goats, on the other hand, seem to know how to get themselves out of messy situations. Sheep are also very timid, frightened easily. Jesus chose to call us stupid sheep, not wily goats. Also, Jesus uses the words, little flock, giving the impression of the flock feeling alone, isolated. So let's try and rephrase this short piece too. Do not be afraid, you small group of stupid sheep. What comfort! I often feel like a stupid sheep, not knowing what to do or which way to go. Jesus is certainly speaking to me here. Why is he exhorting us not to be afraid? The text says, For your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. We have a father, and not any father. This father has a kingdom. In fact, an everlasting kingdom. And not only has our father got this kingdom, he is pleased and wants to give this kingdom to us. Finally, what are we afraid of? The context in the previous 10 verses is our provision. So let us rephrase this passage and in concepts from other scripture that fit with this. How does the following sound to you? Do not be afraid of what you'll eat or drink or what you will wear or how you'll pay the rent at the end of the month. Even though you make stupid mistakes like sheep, your daddy king who owns all the cattle on a thousand hills will bail you out every time because he loves you. Isn't that wonderful? But then Jesus goes on in verse 33. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. What has this to do with the previous verse? And why is Jesus asking such a ridiculous thing from me? Just imagine having a little kid of, say, five or six, and you give them a plate of food. They separate the food on their plate into two halves, and you look and wonder at what they are doing. You then ask them why, and they answer, Well, Daddy, I'm going to eat half the food today, and keep the other half for tomorrow, just in case you don't provide tomorrow. I don't know about you, but that would be like an arrow to my heart. Equally, God is saying here, I've promised to look after you, and so you can give away, and you do not need to worry about tomorrow. I have promised that you, as you seek my kingdom, I have got your tomorrow sorted. I believe God wants us to be like a little child who has been given a bag of sweets, and as they give to the adults in the circle, they're not trying to figure out how many will be left for themselves. Can we live life with this abandonment, not worrying about tomorrow, just enjoying the sweets in our mouth as we, with our grubby little fingers, bless those around us with what's left in the bag? In Mark chapter 10, a rich young ruler asked Jesus, how he can have eternal life. In verse 21, it says, Jesus loved him and said that he sell all his possessions, give the money to the poor, and then follow Jesus. The key here is Jesus loved him. Jesus wanted to release him from the heavy burden of trying to protect his possessions and wanted him to experience the bubbly, carefree 
freedom of a three-year-old, and he wants this relaxed, vibrant life for you and for me. At the beginning of December 2012, we offered to have the two or three trainees in our mission organization, Operation Mobilization, who had no place to go for Christmas to enjoy Christmas Eve at our place. As the month dragged on, for one reason or another, more and more Christmas plans were cancelled, and the three became 23, including our family. As I believe when I get to heaven, the meal will be out of this world, we took our food money for January and spent it all on the Christmas meal. We decided that there had to be so much roast lamb, chicken, cool drink and dessert left over that no one could wish for any more of any particular item. We had a real party trusting God that January was God's problem. This is the carefree that God is calling us to. This is the freedom God wants for you and for me. Getting back to the passage we are studying, Jesus changes tack again, offering us a proper investment opportunity, which is guaranteed not to fail, as he says, provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. Jesus is saying, don't worry, give your possessions away because you'll be investing into an investment that cannot fail, and you'll be reaping the rewards from this investment for eternity. And then Jesus goes right to the core of the matter in verse 34. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus is warning us that our heart follows our treasure. So if you want your heart in heaven, your treasure needs to be in heaven. Our family was on board the OEM ship Logos 2 in Kiel, northern Germany in December 2007. I wanted our children to see snow, so I decided to go on a 10-day holiday in southern Germany. We had 2,100 euro that we could use for the holiday. This may sound like a lot, but as we looked on the internet, the cheapest decent accommodation we could find for a family of five was 140 euro per day. A rental car was 30 euro per day, meaning we would have about 40 euro per day for food, fuel, entrance fees, and everything else we wanted to do. Tight, but doable. So I decided to go ahead and booked leave for 10 days. The next day, Madeleine found out that the maid, Sina, that used to work in our house in South Africa before we left for the ship, still did not, still did not have a roof for a house, and that she had started building years earlier and was still stuck in the shack next to the unfinished structure. She asked me if we could help Sina, I answer that the only money we have is for the holiday. But Madeleine asked if we can give somehow, give something to Sina. We decide to ask our boys. It is amazing how God often provides real answers through children. Samuel, who was 12 at the time, answered, How can we enjoy our holiday knowing Sina has no roof? I immediately transferred the 800 euros needed for a roof to South Africa and decided to cancel the holiday. Madeleine then received an email from a friend who said that she had heard we were thinking of taking a holiday in southern Germany and asked us rather to come to Austria as her neighbour had an upstairs apartment fully furnished that we could use for free. The next day, I was offered the free use of a car by a stranger. We had the most incredible holiday, seeing the green grass turn white until there was about 60 centimetres of snow everywhere. We saw castles and lakes and walked in the woods and were invited out for so many meals. When we arrived back at the ship, we still had 650 euro in our pocket. Let's talk investment. We had invested through the roof of Sina 800 euro into the bank of eternity. We had 650 euro in our pocket and we had a holiday of a lifetime. So let us now try and rephrase this whole Little passage again, using concepts from other parts of scripture. You do not need to be afraid of what you'll eat or drink, or what you'll wear, or how you'll pay the rent at the end of the month. And even though you make stupid mistakes like sheep, your daddy king, who owns all the cattle on a thousand hills, will bail you out every time because he loves you. I have promised to look after you, and so you can give away. You do not need to worry about tomorrow. I've promised that as you just seek my kingdom, I have got your tomorrow sorted. So, be like your heavenly 
daddy and give freely to those in need. Not worrying about tomorrow. And guess what? You'll be heaping up an eternal treasure for yourself that cannot fail. And your heart will automatically, in the process, be full of heavenly joy. Do you want that joy flooding your heart? Test the scripture. Start asking God who you can bless with what you have and see for yourself the deep inner joy that will fill that space that was occupied with worry of the future. Found your heart stirred and eager to know more? Please do come over to our house for a cup of coffee and we can chat. Let us pray. Father, thank you that you understand that we are like sheep that cannot look after ourselves. Thank you that you never intended us to look after ourselves, but you want us to live a life of true freedom, both now and for eternity. Give us wisdom who and how we can be a blessing to those in need. May your kingdom come into my world, and may I help people taste a little bit of heaven that crossed my path. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a super God-blessed day.